I was in the black space in the void, and she was showing me like these. There was like millions of different bubbles, which were all the different constructs. Wow. And I didn't know what I was seeing at the time. I just knew that I could tune into every single one of those and access all the dimensional spaces, realms, etc., all at the same time. Felt like I felt like my soul was going to explode because you, mm. all that information just goes within you. Hello, I am here today with Darius J. Wright. And Darius is a prolific out-of-body explorer, delving into different dimensions and unlocking the secrets of the unseen realms through the out-of-body state. With deep insights into the nature of reality, Darius teaches and speaks publicly about accessing the other side and awakening dormant abilities within all of us. And I just have to say, I was just telling Darius before we began recording that I've never run across somebody sharing this depth of information from out-of-body explorations. And so this interview is going to be really unique. I'm so excited to get into this conversation. Thank you for joining me, Darius. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. So maybe we could start at the beginning. Would you mind sharing how you began having out-of-body experiences. You were pretty young, if I remember correctly. Yeah, so all this stuff typically happens to people as a child, but they're just Mm -hmm. unaware of what's going on. All the things that I was experiencing, sleep paralysis, seeing beings, all that was happening to me very young. And as a child, I shut it down to fear, you know, seeing all these creatures, sleep paralysis, etc. By the time I was 16 years old, I was at a point then where I was very awake to things. And I just wanted to know the why, like really know the reason why I'm here. What's the purpose of this? At that time, I was taken out of the construct completely. And I didn't have the terminology at the time to explain it, to be shown all things again. And that was the creation. That was why this place is the way it is. And in the future events to take place. And she showed me a bunch of other things like time and thoughts and stuff like that. Like a lot of these things I didn't understand. And I remember sharing the story about the Celeste experience. And the only thing that I could recall was the feeling. I didn't have the detail. I didn't have the context uh, as I do now. 2013 is when I started traveling. But then 14, I was in Morocco and the out-of-body states started happening so uh, dramatically for me where every single night they were happening where I begged them to stop, essentially. Like, it just could not control them. Like, every single night, waking up in sleep paralysis. And it wasn't necessarily a bad thing. Like, I understood because of the childhood experience. And I was leaving my body every single night. Like, I remember leaving my body in Morocco. Like, I'll leave, and then I would just test things. Like, I'll look at the wall. And I would test the environment and I, w- I wouldn't even leave the room. I'll look into the mirror, stuff like that. But the reason why I got uh, tired of it is because every single night when you feel like you're dying, you sort of get tired of that, that feeling of you're dying because that's what it feels like. And from then until now, I've been working on, okay, well, this is a this is something that's happened to me naturally. So how do I practice this at will? How do I do something where I could control the natural gift that I have? And that's where I started to research stuff into sleep paralysis, what it was. I wasn't finding anything because all of it's, they, they don't know what it is. And like you look at the mainstream approach to it. And sleep paralysis is the gateway to the other side for a lot of people that experience it naturally. And a lot of people, when they experience it naturally, they are in a lot of fear because it feels like you're dying. But I have learned how to control this to such a degree where not only if I choose to come out of my body, there's a method that I use to control this where I shut my body down, I enter sleep paralysis, and I leave. There's a thing when you're going through this process as well, where you need to control your emotions because you need to get rid of the fear of death in order to leave the body. And it's not necessarily a lot of people could have, they know that death isn't real and they, the fear is not present, 
but there's like this default switch within the body. It's almost like adrenaline. Like, you know, if something's coming after you, the body just turns on to that default of survival. So when you shut the body down to such an extreme state, the body has this program that overrides, even though you're not in fear, you need to learn how to control that. I've learned how to do that as well. To give people an understanding of what an out of body is, because this is lumped into a lot of the astral projection and dreams and stuff like that. And that's a small part of accessing all things. Typically, when you're accessing the dream space and lucid dreaming, you're only accessing your dimensional spaces, which is your field. The out of body state is the same thing as a near death experience, but it's a near death experience controlled. So when people have near death experiences, they try to accumulate all things like I have when I was 16 years old through that one experience. I couldn't put it into words and detail. I just had like this mass array of feeling. They're trying to put one experience into that. But when you have controlled OBEs, you're accessing the other side many, many, many times. When you're out of the body, it's also more physical than having a physical body. That's something that people don't understand because it's hard to, it's hard for people to understand how could I be more physical and more real and more dense on the other side than I am here. The thing is, the other side is a reflection, like it's a copy, it's a dumbed down version. So it's like as above, so below, as within, so without. When you're there, it is more real than what you could ever experience here because you have more access to who and what you really are. You could call it the light, right? The light within you is more, consciousness is more. So you're accessing more of everything. So it is more real. When you come here, there's a veil. Your memories aren't fully within the body because there's like this speed limit on it. When you leave the body and you access all things again, you sort of take the physical body and you increase that limit so more information could come within it and you remember things again. So that, does that give you a, yeah, it's a broad yes. overview, but. <laughs> yes. So thank you for sharing. There's so many questions I have just about that. So you said that initially you were staying in your room when this was happening spontaneously, that you were leaving your body during your sleep. So what was the first experience like for you when you ventured outside of your room and accessed more of the other side? So actually, I'll cover two things, right? This okay. is with the near death in out of body because it's very relevant for people that experience this and they're going to go, oh, I've experienced that too. Let's go into near death. So I'm going to go into one direction, lead us back to the original question. Okay. When you go into near death experiences, a lot of people experience distortions within their near-death experiences. This is where you get people where they die and they cross over and they go to hell mm -hmm. and it's all doom and gloom. The greatest fears are experienced temporarily until they say, I've had enough, and then they reach out to the light and something helps them. They fully cross over. When you are out of your body, all things are seen again and your field is very accessible. So what your greatest fears and your greatest desires when you leave the body, if your emotions are not in control, you will experience things to be fearful of. And I've experienced this many times in the out-of-body state. So going back to the OBE stuff, when I first was accessing things, my emotions were extremely out of control. I, I did not have control over them because here we think having control over your emotions is just not talking about it or suppressing it, ignoring it. When you're out of your body, everything that you think is in your field, that like the greatest fear is that you are thinking in the background, Ex you could experience instantly there. So when I came out and started to explore outside of the room, that's what I saw. I saw things to be very uh, fearful of, mm. things trying to attack me, et cetera. This is where you get people in dreams, like you ever have the dream where you're stuck in like sand, you can't run and there's a beam behind yeah. you trying to attack you. That's actually you, it's not a being trying to attack you. You are in your field, your dimensional space that you're creating. And if you have fearful things, belief systems that are still present, you create that dimensional space to experience whatever it is that you want, including the fearful thing. So that's what I was experiencing in the beginning. And it wasn't until I got to the point where I was like, I'm not actually afraid of these entities anymore or these things. And then as soon as I got rid of that fear around that, I've 
I cleaned up my field, my emotions were under control in the out of body state. And that only when that happened is when I started to access the records outside of the construct, seeing the realms being shown the nature of reality and also my relatives starting to communicate with me. So I just wanted to make that part. That's why I said, because th it's important because you have people in their dream space that are experiencing fears. They don't understand what it is, like the things attacking them, near death experience things. You get a lot of the distortions until they break free from the out of control emotions and also the out of body stuff where initially you get things attacking you when it's you're experiencing your greatest uh, fears and stuff like that just due to you not having control and on a yeah unaware of how things how quickly things actually are manifested there based off what you are projecting through your thoughts that is fascinating so i was going to ask you to define what the field is based on what you're saying cuz you mentioned it was the dimensional space that we're creating. So is that sort of like the same thing that we call law of attraction here where we're creating or we're existing in a certain energy and then creating that reality around us? Yeah, you, you could say that law of attraction, if that's where you want to look at it as uh, that's a way to look at it. But yeah, mm -hmm. so your thoughts, thoughts and time. Well, when I was accessing this stuff, I'm still, well, still accessing this stuff. When out of my body, you access thoughts and time. And thoughts and time are one and the same thing. Many times when I'm out of my body in the past, trying to figure out, I was like seeing things in the past. And I, was, I was like, why am I seeing this? Or why am I seeing that? Like I'm seeing people doing things when their physical bodies is sleeping in the bed. And I realize, right, to present day, now knowing what I'm seeing is that when you are out of your body, you could see people's thought forms, thought forms materialized in the space that you're in. And it's not only like you could see their thought forms, like you're reading their mind, like you are literally in it. You could touch it. You could feel it. You could feel the emotion from that individual, what they created. Now, the thoughts, as you know now, if you think of something here and you constantly keep that in the forefront of your vision in the mm -hmm. center stage, you will walk the path of that potential time event. This is why thoughts and time are very similar. So when you are out of your body, you, you could access potential future events because you could see thought forms in people's fields, your field, and potential time events that could take place based off the path that you could choose, right? So this is where, yeah, you could basically see both of them playing out at the same time to keep things uh, a little bit private with the personal details, but people in my personal life out of my body and I was seeing certain things taking place, certain potential future events. And I actually told one of my friends what was going to take place based off what I saw. And I said, just don't say anything. Let's just see if it actually happens. And verbatim, I walked out in the backyard. I was just sitting down and verbatim, it played out exactly how I saw it. So wow. <laughs> amazing. You don't also access that through the out of body. You also access this through dreams. A lot of people, when they dream, they don't understand that they are accessing typically, right? Third dimensional spaces. And when you access your dimensional spaces, your field, you also have access to potential time events within your circle, the connections that you have within your circle. This is why even people have dreams and they have dreams of the future and it plays out as they dreamt it, let's say three months ago, because you have access to that in the dream space as well. This is why I said the dreams and out of body is different because when you're out of your body, you could tap into your field very easily and you could tap into other people's fields. Mm -hmm. When you're dreaming, you're in that field and you don't know how to exit that bubble to access all things and see all things, mm -hmm. unless you know how to and you become fully aware, and et cetera. Right. So how can a person tell when they're having an experience like this, if they're stuck in their field experiencing some fear that they've created or if they're actually experiencing the other side there's a stark difference and it, it's a feeling you just know so when you are accessing thoughts it feels like it actually feels like you're accessing someone's thoughts like it's there's like a mist in the air like you just know it's a different texture like you, mm -hmm. you ever walk into like an abandoned building and you just get this feeling all over your, your 
hairs right on your arm raise up and stuff like yeah. that. Like you just feel it. That's sort of what it's like when you're accessing your field and other people's fields. You just, there's a sense that you're in like this misty environment. It's very magical, but you know you're accessing, it's just a different environment mm -hmm. versus when you're accessing time. I have always felt personally for me when I'm accessing potential time events, like things start to warp and bend before I see certain things. Like I remember coming out of my body, this had to be about a, two months ago. No, yeah, two and a half months ago. And as I'm out of my body, this is the story that I've told you already, seeing a friend playing out. As soon as I walked out the bedroom, the hallway started to ex extend and like warp in. And that's when I started to access potential time events and stuff like that. So there are slight differences. When you are fully out of the field space and you're viewing all things, mm -hmm. it's like, um, feels just like this, like just walking around physical life, but all the pleasures of physicality with no limitations. Mm -hmm. So it, it's hard to explain, but you know, because there's different sensations and feelings that you feel when you're accessing certain things. This is why it's taken me a while to navigate certain things and understand certain things through a multitude of experiences instead of just one to pinpoint certain things. Okay. Well, I like to talk about some of the things that you've seen in your out-of-body experiences. And I was watching your interview with Jeff. So correct me if I'm wrong. And if I understood this correctly, you said that there's constructs that contain realms and then there's realms that contain dimensional planes. Is that correct? Okay. So I actually have that slide if you want me to share it. Yes, I would love okay. that. All righty. Okay, so you should be able to see that, yeah? Yes, I can see it. So this is just a updated version of what I shared on Jeff, because what I was uh, sharing in that one was just this image. Yeah, here. I remember. Yeah. When I was uh, sharing that, I was just talking about the different realms, all the realms, because we have a total of 12 realms within this construct that we're in here. So what you see on the image on the left is the construct. Now, this is what it was shown to me. It, I would say this image is a 90% accuracy of what it looks like on the other side when you are outside of the construct viewing it from the Godhead. Mm -hmm. So let's just say like these people here, they're looking inside the construct. Within the construct contains realms, mm -hmm. realm one, realm two, realm three, et cetera. We are within realm one right now. Within each realm contains dimensional spaces. This is where you see the image on the right, all the different layers of dimensional spaces. And these dimensional spaces are created through the realms through thought forms, like I was talking about through your field, like what mm -hmm. you think you create a dimensional space within this realm. There are also fixed dimensional spaces that you can access when you go up to the stars as well, those certain portal gateways, et cetera. So the realms, the multiple realms, and dimensional spaces are contained within a construct, a single construct. And there are multitudes of constructs on the other side. Some of them have been shown to me as like puddles on the floor, as you see here, if I zoom in there, like they just look like things that you could step into, into different constructs to experience whatever that you could call game template has to offer. Mm -hmm. But th this one is, looks like this, as it was shown to me. Some of them look like open fish bowls, et cetera, firmament above, a dome, et cetera. That's how it was presented to me. I believe that's the end of that one. Okay, that is fascinating yeah. to me, especially looking at that picture. So are these... these are, yeah, these are just like the same thing, but just like to give you just three of a little bit different, but yeah. So how many constructs are there, do you know? There's many, 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 many. I would say it goes on because how many constructs are there is like saying, is, is there an end to consciousness? Because mm. it's never ending because it's based off right. you as a soul when you're out of all things. When you want to experience something, if you want to create something, you do that through thought, the spoken word, and you create the construct, the realms to have that experience. So many to... I can't even place a number on it, to be honest with you, because I remember when I was be when I was showing the the many constructs, it was actually shown to me as like uh, 
a gallery of constructs stacked on God's shelves. Like it was just like a, a hall, like it, it's, they all just stacked and just one on and one on, one on. And some of them, this is where I said, they look like they were all slightly different, like puddles on the floor, open fish bowls, like, and what a, a bean was actually showing me as well, that the more realms within the construct, that's where like the light had more light to it, more color, more vibrancy versus like I was showing a construct that had only one realm within it and it didn't have that much light within it. It was slightly different. So the more that's within that, the more light is birthed within that creation, really. Yeah, that's how it was shown to me anyways. Okay. So, and yeah. then you said there was eight realms in our construct. No, 12. Oh, 12. So 12. Okay. Yeah, 12. So yeah, so this is 12. And then the 13th is the what's containing everything, which is a construct. So 12 realms and then right. 13, which contains everything. This is where you get the cycles of time, right? And the cycles of event markers, everything. We base it off 12, but it's really supposed to be based off 13, 13 cycles and stuff like that. This where also some people experience the many different versions and resets of this game that we have played many times. This is the history always repeats itself because the template of this construct that we're, we are in has been played out many different versions, many different times. It's just like a different, best way to put it is think about an Xbox. The Xbox is a construct, mm -hmm. the video game, earth version number one, you put that in, that's the realm. You play that same script, different roles, take the game out, put in version two. So we played this version many times. This is where you get the same names, the same gods, just different names, same person. Okay. Fascinating. Are you familiar with Lori Ladd? No, no, don't know who she is. Okay. She says something. She talks about something like this that reminds me a lot of what you're saying. So I just want to find out from your perspective, if I'm understanding this correctly. And if not, please correct me because this um. is fascinating. So she talks about how our universe exists specifically for the purpose of the evolutionary cycle that we're going through right now, where we're evolving the way the language that she uses is from third to 5D. And I know there's different ways of talking about it. But she, what she says reminds me so much of what you're saying, because she says that our universe is like, it's like within this bubble and everything mm. within this construct is about Earth's evolution and that outside of this construct, and I can't remember what word she uses, but there's other things that we don't even have language for because it's so different from what we experience here. And she said, for instance, the I am presence is something that only exists here within this construct. And it's just, it's fascinating to think about it. And it really bends your mind to think about how different things could be in other universes or other constructs. Yeah. So the universe, uh, how she's saying it, just, mm -hmm. yeah, you, you basically said it already. Replace the universe with construct because the, the construct that we're in is the universe of the earthly realm experience. And there's 12 realms okay. to it. Now, the evolution, that's where we're going to differ. Not really, because it's just, this is just a construct that was created to experience the extremes. It, okay. Right now, we are experiencing what we are not when we cross over, right? decaying of the body, pain, suffering, all experienced here, not there. So this is the only construct in creation where we experience the absolute extremes of what we are not. And in that case, it becomes the unexperienced. And therefore, this is where it could go into deeper things based off people's consciousness. There is no good or bad, et cetera. It's just an experience. But when you are out of all constructs completely, so like uh, the image that I shared, when you're out of them completely and you're standing back into the source and creation of all things, there is no limitation on what you could experience, create, et cetera. This is also the only earth, I'm just going to call it uh, the earthly construct. This is the only one where we experience incarnation 
right? Doesn't ex- exist anywhere because when you when you um go into different places on the other side, you don't need to be birth to experience, and you don't need to die to exit because you're 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 going into those places with your soul, which doesn't die. So you pop in, had enough, you pop out here in this realm, realm one. You have to be birth and then death in order to exit. It's not even how it is on even within the realm number five, which is the heavenly realms. So heaven is actually within this construct. It's not on the other side. It's still the template within this construct of the heavenly realms, which is in realm five. And you don't even need to die there to exit either. And now this is where also the base template of that realm is also the age of 30, et cetera. Like there are certain, certain templates and stuff that are in place. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. Yeah, cool. Yeah. So what exists outside of the constructs? You go back to the beginning of way, way, way back, all right? And to, we're talking about essence, source, Mm -hmm. beginning. There really wasn't a beginning because it just is, but I'm just saying beginning because it helps understand. You go way back to the beginning. It's actually the void. So outside of all things is the void. It's the what I call the black spaces, which I've been taken to when I was 16, I've been taken to three times um, out of my body. And the void is, it's extremely empty, very peaceful, while at the same time you could tune into all things. It's the void and it's black, not because it's dark, because it contains all the color. Black is black because it has all the color. So that's the beginning of things. Like if you were to step back to source, but when you want to, and even you, you would probably be clued in with this, even if you look into the, the Bible, God created the earthly realm, and then he said, let there be light. Light is always secondary. Same on the other side. You see, the black space, the void, bursts light. When you, and it, it, even look at it this way as well, when you close your eyes, right, you're in, the, you're in the void, you're in the blackness. When you want to, you start to imagine something, you birth light into creation mm-hmm. through imagining it into your vision and you start to see it. Same thing there. So when you're in the beginning, it's pretty much of all things, you're back in the void. And when you want to experience something, you birth the light into creation to experience whatever it is that you want. This is where the black space, the void created all things, the extremes, heaven and hell, duality, all of it, all from there. Wow. So this is probably one of those questions that we don't have the appropriate language for, but we've mentioned souls a couple of times in this interview. So is the soul something that is part of the creation that's created by the source, or is the soul part of the source? You were never created, and source mm-hmm. was never created, because the things that are created have an end date to it. We, we, you are always in a place that is that just is, all right? Creation did not create you, the individual soul. Each individual soul has always been their unique expression of their individuality. So mm-hmm. your, your soul was not created. You, you trying to find a good way to explain this in words, like you just said, <laughs> but it's <laughs> each soul is their own source. You could say their own Godhead. And we all are connected because everything's connected as well, but we all have our individual individuality. When people think when they fully cross over, they merge and they become like a collective mind, not necessarily, no, right? You you are connected and you could tune into all things, but you still retain your individuality, your soul expression. This is where you get the unconditional love and, you know, stuff like that, because each individual soul is so unique in their self-expression that each individual soul honors each individual soul for the uniqueness because no soul is actually like the other. So we are the same, but we are so different that we're not even the same. You could say that as well. I think a lot of people will be relieved to hear that because that's a question that I get a lot. And you know, I'm sure there's some spiritual teachings that teach that we will completely merge back with the source and lose our individuality and sense of self. No, 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 not at all. You, when you leave and you cross over, you, who you are right now, all your thoughts, what you're thinking goes with you. As soon as you leave the body, 
everything that you are thinking will, when you step out will come with you. The only thing that happens, right, is, is it's, it's not a merging and it's not a loss of individuality, is that the longer you're on the other side, the more memories return to you. So that's the merging where you, your memories start to flood within you slowly and you remember all things again, but you still retain your individuality and all of your experiences, memories, your soul records, et cetera, all, all come back to you. Another question that I get a lot, and I think you would be the perfect person to ask this to, is um, about a soul trap. There's some people who are saying, even some prominent people like Robert Monroe, who was a out-of-body explorer, said that in one of his travels out of body, he saw what he called louche and that they were uh, using Earth as a prison planet and harvesting energy from us. And I'd love to hear your thoughts on that and if you've ever seen anything like that. Okay. So this goes into two two ways. One is you can never entrap a soul and you can never, yeah. So when you look at the core of things, the, this, I'm going to go into one direction, lead us back to, but I need to give you context so you understand it. You can never control or enslave a soul unless the soul believes that it can be controlled or enslaved because the universe does not dictate consciousness, consciousness being your soul. Consciousness dictates the universe. So if you believe that something can entrap you, then you, through your thoughts, manifest your greatest fears, etc., to play out. When you look at the looping of cycles, that's where you get soul trap, yeah? The soul trapping, the looping, reincarnation, you know, trapped in here, loop, loop, loop. Not necessarily, no, because you, what souls are remembering is this construct that we are within has preset cycles, preset event markers that take place regardless of, of individual souls trying to change it. They, they are preset within the, the game, right, that we're playing. So there's been many versions of this many versions that we played out reset, you know, this is where you get the mud floods and all that stuff. And the, no, there's been many versions of this that have been reset. Now, when the soul chooses to leave, you could exit at any point in time. Like say, for instance, if you were to die tonight, you may, based off if you have that fear of I'm going to be trapped or whatever, you may have that temporary fear play out, just like people have the, the hell play out. But there will come a point where, you know, you say I've had enough and then you cross over and then you're done, right? Because you can never truly entrap a soul unless you believe it to. And then you create that temporary experience until you break free from it. Um, but yeah, I, based off what I've seen and what I've accessed is what people are referring to is the looping, the reincarnation, the cycle is just basically the cycles of the many versions of this that has been played many, many games and versions that have been played of this earthly construct, the realms, et cetera. Fascinating. Yeah. The soul trap is a bit of, I mean, you, you're going to get people that rave about it and believe it. And then that leads them into the, the victim mentality. And then it's a spiral of mm -hmm. disempowerment, really, because when the soul chooses to stand, truly, nothing could stop it. You can never truly be trapped unless you believe it too, because you will that belief into creation and therefore you have that temporary experience. Thank you for explaining that. So you've mentioned that you had an experience when you were taken out of the construct completely when you were 16. Is that something that you're comfortable sharing about? Yeah. So, I mean, I've shared when I was 16, I've, I've shared a lot of basically it already, you know, okay. with the constructs so, and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's that basically she showed me everything that I've basically explained already with the constructs, the realms, dimensional spaces, just when she was showing me this stuff at the time. I remember taking me back to the void. One of the mm -hmm. things, like the many different constructs, she actually, I was in the black space in the void and she was showing me like these, there's like millions of different bubbles, which were all the different constructs. Wow. And I didn't know what I was seeing at the time. I just knew that I could tune into every single one of those and access all the dimensional spaces, realms, et cetera, all at the same time. It felt like, it felt like my soul was going to explode because you, mm. all that information just goes within you. So she showed me that. She showed me time right? How time works. She showed me back 16 that 
how they view time is like, I've been shown time two times, no, th three times. But when I was 16, she showed me at like, it was like thin layers of crystal glass and you could put your hand on it, fast forward it, you know, because all things are happening and you could see things, potential future events, things that have already happened and they're stored in the records of all things. But yeah, it's, she showed me time as well, thoughts, pretty, pretty much everything that I've covered already. So do you remember what any of the future events were? One of them that she showed me, which made my soul wanted to come back because there's a, there's definitely a difference because when you're over there, more of yourself, you remember things again, slow. It's not all at once, but slowly it comes in, you know? And she showed me that this realm comes to the construct, comes to the completion. This is the final version. Like I said, the games, like, you know, version one, version two, version three. Well, this is the last version of the earthly realm experience is what she was showing me. So there will be no another, it's the last chapter of this, of this book. And uh, she was showing me the completion of this, which was showing to me in a, a big celebration. And that was basically, and my, when she showed me that my soul wanted to come back and had the urge to, because it's there is your eternal aspect of yourself. So you always return back to back there. Each soul goes back home. And once she showed me the completion of this, it was like, okay, well, because this is never going to repeat again and never going to happen again, my soul desire is to experience the unexperienced because it adds to you in a way that I, do, I can't fully comprehend now. Like it, it's like, it's almost like it adds to your soul by a thousand, even though that's a, you know, it's a random number, but it adds to you a lot when you do cross over again to experience something that will never happen again. Because all the memories, all of the experiences are all stored within the records, the universal records on the other side. So it's different from a soul on the other side when this complete, when it comes to its completion, could view all the experiences, but it's like reading a book versus experiencing it. But right. when you're here, you experience it, experience it, you get something different from just reading the book, you know, mm -hmm. and viewing it. That's what a lot of people are saying, whether near-death experiencers or whoever, just that what we're going through right now is so unique and souls just want to be here for that experience or for whatever they gain, whatever type of expansion they gain from it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, some souls are choosing to leave. And that's fine as well. I mean, I was showing that when I was in the halls of Amente, like when I was in the halls of Amente, which is actually here, it's the middle pyramid, and that's how you access it. And it also contains the records of the most recent reset within this realm. But when I was there, they're, they're actually, I remember sitting or standing around a table, there's like a hundred different beings there. And they're actually talking about a mass exodus that people, a lot of people will be leaving this realm. And that did take place. You know, that was back at two years ago or three years. Uh -huh. Yeah. So some souls are leaving. Not all souls desire to stay here. And that's fine. That's why I said before, there's no trapping your soul. When a soul chooses to leave, they're, they're gone. And it's not necessarily, it's like, oh, they're gone. No, they're just, they're back on the other side. They see it all. They're in total peace and balance again, you know, mm. and experiencing what they want. Some people take a detour. Some people go to the heavenly realms, you know, instead and experience that. But that's just a, it's like a, people don't stay in the heavenly realms forever. It's just like a temporary pit stop. You can stay there for however long you want and then exit that, mm. go back to all creation again wow. or the source of things. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So again, this is hard to talk about w without using time words, but since this is an experience that's never happening again, what will happen to the construct after the experience is over? Will it somehow come to an end or be is does it exist outside of time and it will always be there? Everything's stored in the records. So the first version of this is stored in the records. Nothing is ever erased. So when this comes to a completion, all right, based off what Celeste is showing me as well, is that <laughs> this goes into the universal records of all things. And so when you cross over and you, you're on the other side, when this happens or finishes, you'll be able to view this through the records and experience everything that has been experienced, but you cannot create new experiences within it. So you just view and see what has already taken place. Fascinating. 
Well, Darius, thank you so much. This is one of the most fascinating conversations I've had with anybody, and I could talk to you for so much longer, but I'd like to give you a chance to share where the viewers can find you. Yeah. So everything that I teach is on my website, darisjwright.com. I teach people how to have the out-of-body experience as a method that I put together there that people go learn from. So just go to the website and you'll see everything that I have on offer there. So wonderful. I'll have yeah. that in the link. And do you also have a YouTube channel? Yeah, that's just Darius J. Wright too. Yeah, DarisJWright.com. I'm not really as people will see when they go to the YouTube channel, I'm not really active that much. So yeah. I just do this instead, just share the information where it needs to be shared and you know, I spend my time not on the phone, but <laughs> trying to shut down my body and get him more information and stuff. Right. Yeah. Well, Darius, thank you so much for everything that you do for putting this information out there for people. And I will have your links in the description so people can find you if they want to. This has been an amazing conversation. Thank you so much for doing this. Yeah, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Thank you for watching the Love Covered Life podcast. Don't forget to subscribe and comment with your thoughts and opinions and check the description box for the links to my free community where I share lots of resources, my pay what you can community where we do classes and challenges together, my TikTok, Instagram, my clips channel, and lovecoveredlife.com where I share my paintings. Thank you so much for your support.